Since the beginning of the pandemic, a rapidly rising share of unemployed Americans find themselves out of a job, especially people who look like us, with little signs that anything is going to slow down. And our panel is back. And Charles, I'll begin with you. Jobs in the economy, obviously what people will be paying the most attention to. The economy has recovered. 12.4 million of the 22 million jobs lost. But most of those jobs were in leisure and hospitality. And as far as black people are concerned, they were not just the main job. They were the second job that they needed just to make ends meet. Are you optimistic that black America is going to be able to recover this time? Well, can I just start, Dale, with just one correction in what that excerpt that apparently the president is going to give? And it is a problem that progressives, uh, a, a misstatement that progressives make all the time. Enslaved labor right. built this country and then exploited labor after that, whether they be in the cotton fields in the South or they be in sweatshops in the North, added to that wealth. And then the Industrial Revolution and unions and the middle class added to that. But we keep erasing the part where it was black people and then exploited people who were the engines to the massive growth that this country experienced in such a very short period of time. So I just want to say that because, because progressives and Democrats and politicians always say that sort of thing and leave off the first part. That said, am I optimistic about you know, uh, the job prospects for black people uh, uh, going forward, period, and then under this plan. First, this is a proposal. They're going to haggle over this proposal. I try not to get too excited about any politician's proposal. First, I'm circumspect about all politicians. Do I believe that Joe Biden was a hands down the better, better candidate over Donald Trump any day of the week, hands down? Do I have some sort of hero concept of any politician, including Joe Biden? I do not. Do I think that, that his, his proposals are perfect? I do not. I think they are good. They go in the right direction. Will those proposals ever see the light of day? I am not at all sure. Biden is very wobbly on this idea of whether or not he is willing to get around Congress, uh, get around the Republicans in the Senate for the second, this second and third major bill. Uh, and so if we don't, if they, if they don't get rid of the filibuster, I'm not sure where it goes. And if, and if the filibuster is not gotten rid of, I'm not sure where these policies go. And, and, this and, is a massive amount of money that they want to give away. And Mark, I think Charles is right. As journalists, sometimes we have to make sure that we keep the feet to the fire of all of them. Because I always get suspicious when I hear politicians say things like, whereas and, and wherefore. I don't know anybody that talks like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tricky game. And, and I think Charles's point, his historical correction around uh, slave labor and exploited labor in, in general, creating the American economy, not the middle class, speaks not just to Biden's sort of lack of historical accuracy, because I think he knows that. Um, I think it speaks more importantly to the fact that he's always willing to play to the middle class in ways that will make the poor and the otherwise economically vulnerable disposable and expendable. P appealing to the middle class makes for great politics. Appealing to the middle class sounds good on sound bites. I'm going to expand the middle class, grow the middle class, etc. But when you talk about black folk who work every day and a month lasts longer than their money, when you talk about black folk uh, who lost those leisure jobs, and those hospitality jobs, which are coming back, but until rich people like you, Dell, go on vacation, you know, <laughs> there's, no, there's no job in the hospitality sector. So we have to think about this on multiple levels here. And we have to think about whether Joe Biden is committed to even saying poor people's names. We talked about not saying black people, not saying poor people's name is probably the most common feature of American politics because Democrats and Republicans do it. So I think uh, when we talk about infrastructure, uh, when we talk about schools, when we talk about the Green New Deal, when we talk about immigration, all of these things still link to jobs, they still link to the economy. And at the bottom rung are those people whose names don't ever get mentioned in American political discourse. You know, Charles, you, you, you touched a nerve, and, and it's a good nerve to touch. You know, Mark said he thinks that Biden knows that. I don't know that he does. I think that a lot of politicians do believe what Biden's saying, which is that Wall Street didn't build this country. Your thoughts? Yeah, listen, I, Mark is right. It, it makes uh, Saying over and over, middle class makes great politics. But people say it so much that when they do polling, 
most of the poor people think that they're in the middle class because that's the only <laughs> name that it gets mentioned. Yeah. And many of the rich people start to say that they are in the middle class and they're far out of the middle class. We don't even know what the middle class is anymore because that language has been so abused by politicians wanting not to talk specifically about poor people. We are about two minutes left in show. Mark, your thoughts on what we should hear from the president tonight that will make black America at least optimistic? Well, I think saying that he has race targeted policies, race specific policies, that his agenda for all of America will help us, but that he is paying a, 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 an extra level of attention to our needs and our interests and to speak to the needs and interests that we articulate, not just saying I have this plan that will help black folk, but hearing black people say, hey, wait a minute, defunding matters. Hearing, talk, talking about uh, taking reparations seriously, something again that he has uh, somewhat dismissed. And when we talk about the brown community, we think about immigration south at, at the southern border. You know, he's much better than Trump, uh, but that's, that's not the floor. I mean, that, that shouldn't be the ceiling, that's just the floor. So hearing him name us, but also talk about policies that, that directly affect us in the same way that he would other communities and other constituent groups, I think that's, that would make us feel better. That's what we should hear in a normative way. Now, what we will hear is probably somewhere in the middle. So we are counting down the minutes now before the president delivers his first speech to Congress, a joint session of Congress. It is not a, a um, presidential address. It is not the, uh, the State of the Union because they don't do that. They don't do that before the joint session because the president has not been in office long enough or at least that is the mentality 